Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you are ready to receive a word from God. I strongly believe that God has a special word for us today. So let's pray as we prepare our hearts to receive from Him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning time and thank you for this opportunity you've given us to hear your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word which is coming to us today. Lord, we purpose not to, not to just be hearers of your word, but also doers of your word. Lord, give us revelation and understanding of your word today. Holy Spirit, you be our teacher and you help us understand your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and Amen. Growing up as a child in India, I remember the frequent power cuts that we would have in our home. This was because every time the wind blew strong or it rained very heavily, the power cables that came inside our home would get disconnected from the main power cables that were outside. And by the time the cables were reconnected by the power company, it would be hours and even days. I remember on countless days doing my homework or studying for my exams in just candlelight. So whenever we were expecting a storm or heavy rains, we would hope and we would pray that the connection of those power cables would still hold tight and our electricity supply would remain. This shows how important a good connection is. When we think of the word connected, we can also relate to something that is plugged in like an electronic device because every electronic device needs to be plugged on or connected to the plug socket in order for it to work. Now in today's world, we are so used to getting things done using modern devices. These devices make many of our daily work easier. However, most of them depend on a source of power in order to function effectively. Whether it's the latest laptop or computer or television set, they still require some kind of power to connect to in order to work. Even an ordinary table lamp requires to be connected to the power outlet to function. Otherwise, it's just a useless piece of hardware. But this source of power is not always reliable because it is dependent on many external factors that determine whether it will be available or not. I'm also sure you must have heard people saying something like, oh, he or she has many connections. When I first heard this as a child, I used to wonder whether the person they were referring to as having many connections was actually connected to an electric cable. Of course, that was not the case, as I soon discovered. So today, when I ask someone the question, have you got connections or are you well connected? Someone would say, oh yes, I'm well connected. And when I ask them, how? How are you well connected? They reply, well, because I know this friend of mine who knows this friend of his, who knows this friend of his, who knows this famous person. Or someone else might say, my uncle plays golf with this friend of his who happens to know this famous businessman. Or yet someone else might boast saying, oh, I have a lot of connections. I have hundreds of friends on Facebook, not only in the UK, but also all over the world. Well, you may have connections, but are those connections reliable? Can you trust them? Can you guarantee that they will not fail you at the time you need them the most? After all, they are human beings subject to failure and always having the potential to disappoint. So similarly in our Christian walk, is there something that we need to connect to? Something that we can always rely upon, something we can count on, a source of power that will never ever fail. Yes, there is only one source of power you can always count on. That source is our Creator, Almighty God. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, working through the Holy Spirit. He is the ultimate of all power sources. We can start our day connected to Him and be supercharged for the rest of the day. 
The connection with Jesus is always reliable. It can never have a breakdown. No matter what kinds of storms or disasters happen around us, it's a connection that can never be hacked or compromised. It's a kind of connection that is highly functional. It is absolutely trustworthy. It is super intelligent. It is incredibly miraculous. It is the connection that can never ever fail. Let's look at a passage from the Bible, which is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and we shall read from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, Abide in me and, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. In just these six verses, the word abide occurs at least five times. The word abide as translated from the Greek means to remain united with someone, to remain one with him, one in heart, one in mind, and one in will. So given that Jesus is saying abide with him, it means to consistently surrender everything to him and constantly depend on him always listening to his words with a heart and mind fixed on obeying all that he says. Abiding is not a one-off activity, but it means a constant and a consistent action. The Christian leader, author J. Oswald Sanders defines abiding as keeping an unbroken contact with Jesus Christ in a union of intimate love. I am reminded of the story in Luke chapter 10 where Jesus goes to the home of two sisters, Martha and Mary. While Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made and was busy doing things, her sister Mary just sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he was saying. Seeing this, Martha came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus answers her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. We see here that Mary was truly surrendered to Jesus. In other words, she was fully connected to him. She wasn't distracted by what was going on all around her. Now going back to our main passage from John 15, in verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Yet Jesus is referring to the fruit of the Spirit. When we are well connected to Jesus, his presence instead of us will help us to bear much fruit in our lives. The Holy Spirit will help us to walk in love. His joy will be our strength. We will have peace in our hearts, and so on. But this is possible only when we are fully connected to Him, when we make Jesus our first love and we allow Him to reign in our hearts and in our minds. Jesus is reminding us here that we do not have to get all worked up and struggle with our efforts. All that is needed is just to be a simple branch that is connected to the vine, which means to be a part of Him. It means to be connected to Him in total surrender and obedience. Then we will bear fruit. It is important that we remember that the fruit of the Spirit can only come forth in us by the power of the Spirit. So no amount of self-effort on our part will bear spiritual fruit. It requires a total surrender of our self-will to God, being obedient to His every word in our daily situations of life where we allow the fruit of the Spirit to come forth 
rather than our own nature. When we are fully connected to him, it becomes so easy to say to him, Dear Jesus, not my will, but your will be done in my life. When we do that, then we begin to bear fruit. Now our Heavenly Father wants us not only to bear fruit, but also bear much fruit. In verse 1 and 2 of John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. See, every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now pruning is the process of cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to encourage growth in the branch. Notice that the verse says, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So it's not the branches that are not bearing fruit which are to be pruned. But in fact, it is those branches which actually are bearing fruit that have to go through this process. So sometimes when the fruit bearing branch has got some parts that are immature or stunted, then the vine dresser comes to prune and cut off those parts of the branch in the hope that the branch will bear more fruit and fruit that will be more perfect, more excellent and abundant with time. Now if those branches that are getting pruned could speak, they would say that this pruning process is quite painful. And yes, it can be painful to us when our Heavenly Father, who is the vine dresser, undertakes the pruning process in our own lives. He will sometimes allow difficult circumstances, allow difficult situations to come over us in different matters such as health, for example, finance, relationships. These trials bring us to the end of our strength until we ultimately realize that we were actually operating on our own strength in those areas instead of operating in the power of the Spirit. And this will then stir in us the need for a deeper surrender to Jesus and a deeper obedience to His Word, which results in us bearing more fruit, which is what our Heavenly Father wants from us. Now you may ask, how long do I have to experience this pruning process? Well, I wish I knew. Although you and I may be looking for answers to our questions, the Father he is not interested in just giving us answers. He wants us to experience more of Himself. What we go through during the pruning process is divinely coordinated and planned by our Heavenly Father. Although it may appear that He has taken a step back from us, He is not far from us. In fact, He is closer to us than we may even realize. He actually lives in us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. He has promised never to leave us. He has promised never to forsake us. And that's why it's important to persist in our journey, to know Him more and to trust Him, even in difficult times. Remember that the Father's love for us is more powerful than anything we will ever face. We just need to trust Him and hang on. The one who has started the work in us will bring it to completion. The Father wants to become our everything. He wants to become our supreme joy. He wants to become our supreme desire. We need to ask Him if there are any areas in our lives that we need to give to Him. We must release the cry of our heart and let Him know that we want Him more than anything. So regardless of what we may have to commit to Him, what we may have to surrender to Him, believe me, it will be worth it. I heard the story of this young man who in his search for God came to study at the feet of a wise man. One day the teacher took the young man to a lake and led him out into a shoulder deep water. Placing his hands on the young man's head, he suddenly pushed him under the water and held him there until the young man in desperation, he fought his way to the surface. In utter shock and confusion, the young man stared at the old man, as if to ask, what in the world are you doing? The teacher, in response, looked at him and said, Son, when you want God as much as you wanted air, you shall find him. 
when you want god as much as you want air you shall find him and that is the key that's the key becoming desperate for god becoming hungry for an intimate relationship with him and how can we do that by reading the word of god by meditating the scriptures by fervent prayer by spending time with god and taking time to listen to him by doing these things we can stay rooted to him like the branch to the vine we will then be able to walk in the anointing the anointing will flow into and through us and into the lives of others we will be as bold as lions we will refuse to fear anything we will reign in life through jesus christ we will be able to bind all the forces of evil in our lives we will be blessed god's wisdom will be in our lives by the fruit of our lips we will be filled with good things life and blessing will be on our tongues we will be equipped to handle all things through him we will inherit all the promises of god through faith and patience we will become effective ambassadors of jesus christ in this world we will become a fruit bearing branch of the vine of jesus christ now in verse 6 of john chapter 15 jesus says if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt so a branch that is not connected to the vine will soon die as it does not receive the nourishment from the vine it so deserves and the bible says that these branches will then be gathered and thrown into the fire to be burnt for example we see in the gospel of matthew in chapter 21 that jesus while walking one day he sees a fig tree by the road he was hungry and he goes up to it to get some fruit to eat however he found nothing on it except leaves no fruits then he cursed the tree saying may you never bear fruit again and that is why it is so important for you and i to be connected to the lord otherwise we will be like the branch that produces no fruit and our eternity will become like that fig tree however on a positive note we are human and we are not perfect but we are righteous in Christ Jesus and he knows that we are fallible and we will fall from time to time and that's why he says that his grace is sufficient for us but our takeaway as responsible children of god is that we need to work out our salvation on a day to day basis through repentance and prayer so in closing let's purpose in our hearts to become well connected to god to depend on him for everything to be well connected to grow in intimacy with him to be connected to believe god for the supernatural let's not get distracted by the things of this world but let us surrender our everything to him let's not put our trust in our ability or in other people or in our jobs or in our career or in our businesses or in the government or on anything else let's put our trust only in god without him we can do nothing but when we continue to be connected to him we will bear fruit much fruit in our lives and when our life on this earth is finished and we come face to face with lord jesus christ there will be a smile on his face as he welcomes us and says well done good and faithful servants amen hallelujah let us pray father god we thank you for your word today lord lord we purpose lord to be that branch which is connected to the vine lord lord help us to take away every hindrance every distraction from our lives lord help us so that we can trust only in you not in anything else but only in you we want to be the branch that produces fruit much fruit we thank you once again for your word today in jesus name we pray amen before i close i would like to extend an invitation to anyone who is watching this if you don't know jesus or if you have never accepted him as your lord and savior then this is an opportunity to do so just think about what would happen if today was your last day on this earth what if you were 
to sleep tonight and not wake up tomorrow if you do not know jesus then there is no way you can enter heaven the only other place is hell which is a place of torment a place of loneliness and despair of fear that will never end the bible says that hell is a place where the fire is not quenched and the worm does not die it's not a figment of anyone's imagination it is real and that's why jesus came to the cross to die at calvary so that you and i would be set free you cannot earn it you cannot buy it you just got to humble yourself to receive it you just have to repent of your sin and say god forgive me i need you i need you in my life i need you today and i am coming to you i'm surrendering my life to you take it i'm giving you my all and he will come and he will do a work in you he loves you he loves you so much and he stands with arms open and he says come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you my yoke is easy my burden is light you might never have another opportunity like this this very day your life might be required of you and that's how serious this is so if you wish to surrender your life to jesus today please say this prayer after me heavenly father i know that i am a sinner i ask for your forgiveness i believe jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead i turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life i want to trust you and follow you as my lord and savior thank you for this new life fill me with your spirit in jesus precious name amen if you prayed this prayer for the very first time then well done if you are at church please lift your hands up and one of the leaders will come and help you with your next step if you are watching online then please click the link which is in the comment section fill in your details so that we can contact you and help you with your next step i want to thank you all for watching god bless you